In this video, we're going to learn how to use the new input system to manage inputs in our projects. The new input system helps us to use many types of input devices and to manage them easily. We can organize and assign different inputs to perform the same action, which helps us to support multiple control schemes and input methods like keyboard, gamepad, and more. Here we have a demo project with a player that can be controlled via the WASD keys to move and the arrow keys to aim and shoot. When we press one of the arrow keys, the player aims in that direction and shoots. This is a fairly traditional twin-stick shooter configuration for keyboard input. To start implementing the new input system, we will need to install it first. We can install it using the Package Manager by going to Window, Package Manager. Make sure that the Packages filter is set to All Packages, and under Advanced, check Show Preview Packages. Then, we will find the Input System package select it and click the Install button. If you've downloaded the demo project via the link below, we've already installed it for you. Now that it's installed, we need to activate it in the Project Settings before we proceed. Choose Edit, Project Settings, then choose Player. Under Other Settings, scroll down and in the Active Input Handling field, choose Input System Preview. Please note that for this to take effect, we need to restart the Unity Editor. After installing and activating the new input system, it's time to start creating our first input actions. In the project window, right-click and then choose Create Input Actions. Let's name ours Player Input Actions. To start editing our input actions, double-click on the newly created asset and a window will open which is called the Input Actions Editor. It consists of three panels. First, the Action Maps panel. Each map has a collection of actions which can be enabled and disabled together. The middle panel shows the actions and bindings of the currently selected map. The third panel shows the properties of the selected action or binding. Let's create a new action map by clicking on the plus icon here and let's name it Player Controls. Now that a map is created and selected, you'll see a new action that appears on the Actions panel. Each action stores one or a group of bindings that will trigger the action when pressed. In our case, we will need two actions, one for the movement input and the other for our combined aim and fire action. If we check the player movement script, we will see that we're using the legacy input system to retrieve the player's input. We have one line of code for each to get the input value for both horizontal and vertical axes. In the player projectile spawner script, we're using the old system to get the aim and fire directions input from the arrow keys. Let's go back to our input actions and add the two actions. Select the new action map, then double click the new action to rename it and change it to move. In the properties window, change its action type to pass through. This will tell the action to listen for any activity. We'll set the control type to vector two, which will store the player's input in one variable of the type vector two instead of using separate floats. Now in the Action panel, click the plus icon next to the action, then select Add 2D Vector Composite and name it WASD because we will be using the WASD keys to trigger it. Select the first binding and assign its path to the W key. Continue assigning the A, S, and D keys to the other bindings. Let's add a new action for the Aim and Shoot functionality by clicking the Add Action button in the Actions window we will repeat the same steps to add our combined aiming and shooting action. Then select its bindings and assign them to the arrow keys. We are almost ready to implement the controls in our script, but we need to export it first as a C-sharp script file. Make sure that the player input actions asset is selected. In the inspector, check the box to set generate C-sharp class to true and hit apply. Now we will see a new c -sharp class is created with the same name as our input action asset. After each modification, remember to hit the Save Asset button. Open the player movement script and create a new variable to reference our input action. The type will be the generated class name, which is player input actions. Then create two variables of the type vector2 to store the movement and firing direction. In the awake method, we have to create an instance of the input action. Then we can use the input performed method 
to retrieve the input value and assign it to our new created variables. In the fixed update method, the script is using the legacy code to get the vertical and horizontal axes. Let's assign the float h to movement input dot x and float v to movement input dot y. In the turn the player method, assign the variable input to look position. We're almost done, but we just need to enable and disable our control actions. We will do that in the on enable and on disable methods. Let's repeat the same process for the player projectile spawner script. In the update method, check if the magnitude is more than 0.1, and if it is, we'll call the shoot method. Return to the editor and hit play to test our game. It's working. One more thing we can do is, let's say you want to use an alternative input for the same action, a gamepad for instance. Go back to our input action and let's create a new binding for the move action, then assign its path to gamepad left stick. Then repeat the same steps for the fire direction and assign it to the right stick. Now, let's organize our inputs and group them into control schemes. You can find control schemes in the top left area of the input actions editor. Create two schemes, one for the keyboard and the other for the gamepad. We can assign a list of used devices for each control scheme. To assign a binding to a control scheme, select a binding, and in the properties window, you'll see all the control schemes we've created. Go to each binding and assign it to its control scheme. Remember, changes aren't saved yet. You can either enable autosaving by checking autosave or just save it manually by clicking the Save Asset button. Connect your gamepad and try playing the game again with both input methods. Now it works in both. How cool is that? And we're done. We have migrated our player controller script to use the new input system. Using the new input system will allow us to easily support our game across multiple platforms, add the capacity for our players to rebind the controls at runtime, and much more. We've made this project available as a free download to experiment with, and you'll find that link in the description below. Thanks for watching.